Welcome to the channel and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I build stone walls for war games. And uh, yeah, I've built loads of these before, but specifically I needed to make some with snow on. So the video concentrates on these ones specifically with snow on because I need some of those for a game and specific scenario that I want to uh, play at some point and hopefully film as well. So yeah, I thought as I'm doing it, I may as well film it and kind of turn it into a vlog. So the process is the same. There's a variety of different ones here, but it's the same basic process for all of them. So we've got two main types here. We've got scatter terrain, and then we've got these ones, which are for uh, Conflict 47 and bolt action. And the main difference is that um, the scatter terrain, they've got a bit of an extra step in, but the, the general process of how you build them is the same. So you take a base, in this case I'm using two millimeter thick uh, laser cut MDF and I got these bases from uh, minibits.net but you can also get them from Pendragon Miniatures I think they're the same company but any laser cut MDF but you could use card or in this case I used a tongue depressor and you take a second piece and you glue it perpendicularly to the base if I let go of this it's probably going to fall over oh no there we go it stays upright uh, for these ones I put uh, an inner core of single corrugated card and then I just hot glue on aquarium gravel to build up the stones and that's basically it and then you base it and flock it so the only real difference is these ones have got a bead of glue around the base so that they being scattered terrain they sort of blend into the tabletop a bit better whereas this one um, I use these for conflict 47 and bolt action and I wanted them to be six inches long and these tongue depressors are 15 centimeters which is more or less six inches and the main reason for that is I'm pretty good at estimating ranges but the main person I play against is my son Joshua he's not so good so it felt like I had a little bit of an unfair advantage so if I can make all of the scenery for bolt action in Kings of um, Conflict 47 in six inch multiples then he's got a little bit better idea when he comes to um, getting ranges for shooting. So yeah, these ones don't have the bead of glue around them, but the rest of the scattered terrain does. And that's basically it. So yeah, I'm gonna be showing you how I made these ones and yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it and learn something. All right, so it's a very rainy day. So the rain is coming down on the skylight. So apologies if you can hear the pitter patter of rain, but I'm starting off by just drawing a bead of glue with me glue gun around the base doesn't matter how tidy this is because it'll get tidied up any anyway now as I say make sure you got your greaseproof paper down because grease um, hot glue will not stick to greaseproof paper it will initially hold it in place oh see that's moving a little bit but that's because the glue's still hot and liquid while you draw your bead around and this will just help blend into the table a little bit more rather than just using a fully rectangular base and then we can take our other one. So that's the five centimeter by two centimeter, the 50 by 20 mil. And then we take one of our 14 by 15s out. That's really hot because I'm looking through the camera not at what I'm doing. There we go, small bead of glue on there. And again, it doesn't matter how tidy or not this is because it's gonna get hidden by loads of stones. So you just do that plenty of times. Here's a few that I made earlier, true blue Peter style. And then once they're cooled, once the glue's cooled, it simply peels off as easily as that. All right, so once they're cooled down, you can simply take your scissors, just move the glue gun out of the way, and just tidy up this edging a bit. So just trim off any bits that look a little bit unsightly. This cuts relatively easily because hot glue isn't all that hot, um, all that tough once it's dry. Yeah, actually that one's not too bad. I quite like the way that one is already. Round off that edge a little bit. Uh, this one's good. This one's got a lot of wispy bits. So you can simply trim them off with the scissors. Get rid of some of this on this corner. A lumpy bit there. Get 
Don't want any wispy bits. And yeah, that's all there is to this bit. Just tidying up the uh, the false edge you've created. Spiky bit there. Trim that off a bit. Nice and easy. Right, now we get to the bit where we're actually putting the stones on. Now, remember, this is hot glue that you're using. It does get hot. I've burnt myself more times than I care to remember. So be warned, you're likely to burn yourself. Um, so all you simply do is you take your core, your carcass, if you like, your wall carcass. I've got some stones ready, some gravel. And I'm going to run a thick bead of glue along one edge and I can't feed my glue stick in properly because the feeder mechanism doesn't work very well on this. There we go. So a good glob of glue and then just grab a stone, stick it on. Grab another stone, stick it on. Just grab stones, press them into the glue. I just burnt myself. Like I say, it's hot. And then once you've done a line, Another bead of glue. Grab some stones, stick them on. So literally, a couple of fingerfuls. Press them into the bead of glue you've done. It looks messy now. It'll look brilliant once it's finished. More hot glue. More stones. You will get through quite a few glue sticks with this. Um, to do a six inch long stretch for the bolt action ones that I showed you earlier, uh, that took, I think it was two glue sticks a pop, maybe even two and a half. Right, and then around the other side, thick bead of glue at the bottom. Drop some stones on, push them on. Shake off the ones that haven't stuck. And just keep going like that. Like I say, I find it quite relaxing doing this. I'll sometimes have, um, you know, YouTube or an Amazon Prime video on in the background, something like that. More hot glue. Oops. More stones. Sprinkle them on. Push them in with your thumb. Take off the ones that haven't stuck, pull off the wispy bits. Loads of wispy bits because I'm using really cheap and nasty glue sticks. If you use proper Bosch ones, you don't get quite so many wispy bits. Um, they're a decent brand like Black & Decker. More hot glue, more stones, push them on. So that's some of it done. Now I want to make sure we hide the end bit. Oh, that stone's not stuck properly either. Don't worry about it too much if you've got some that are like half stuck because they will be fully stuck when we get around to painting it. But hide this strip of MDF up here. Bead of glue. Push on some more stones. The other end, see, there's one that's rolling around on a stringy bit. That'll get stuck in when we do the bead up here. Okay, this is one stick, so just let it fall off. Push more stones on. Hide that piece that's in the middle. And then pull away the stringy bits. Make sure, oh that one's come away, so again, just squirt a little bit more glue on. Get stone that doesn't stick, add more glue. Make sure there's no bits of MDF shown on the top, so I'll just squirt a little bit into there. Get a stone, stick it in. There's a little bit there. Bit of glue, squirt. Stone, push. 
There. Now, we'll start pulling away the wispy bits. Apologies if I'm coming out of shot. But there, there's the first one. That's ready for painting. Pull away any more wispy bits. You want to get the worst of the wispy bits off, but don't worry if you've still got some left. But there, that's the first one. Five centimeter long wall section. Right, now we're on to painting. Now you could just paint it, or you could, if you really want to do, just leave it like that, but I think it looks better when it's painted. Um, yeah, gonna paint stones to look like stones, ultimately. But I like to give them a good base coat of this Mod, Mod Podge mix. Uh, the recipe of which comes from Black Magic Craft on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, you take half a pot of Mod Podge and you add a good healthy dollop of black paint to it, just ordinary black acrylic craft paint. And we're gonna paint the whole thing with it. And I stuck one of the wall sections with a piece of blue tack onto an old bottle of paint, uh, simply because I don't like getting Mod Podge on my fingers. Um, you could just paint it black, you could just coat it with PVA, but bear in mind if you use PVA, as soon as you start to put anything water-based on it, you'll reactivate the PVA. It'll go gloopy again, it effectively melt again. Uh, so I like to use Mod Podge with black paint, so I'm just going to give it a coating of that. Give it a good shake, because I haven't used this for a while. Ooh, and it's lid stuck to it, there we go. Right, got some in the lid. I'll take it out of the lid first. And, right. And again, I've got a really cheap craft brush, kids' craft brush. Uh, can't remember where I got that from now. I think it was Hobbycraft. Pack of about five or six. No, more than that, about a dozen cheap brushes for a couple of quid from Hobbycraft. Okay, just paint it on. And because Mod Podge has got adhesive properties in it. Again, it helps to seal it, gives it a good base for painting it, the actual rock colours, but yeah, it's, it's got the glue in it, the, the adhesive properties, so it helps stick everything together that little bit more, rather than just relying on the, uh, the hot glue. And again, nice relaxing thing to do, you don't need to think about it, you can just take your brain out, put it to one side, while you're just splodging on the Mod Podge. All the way around it, obviously the bigger stretch of wall you do, the longer it's gonna take. But all the way around this glue lip, hot glue lip that we did. All that over the top. to do some more, paint some more of these while I'm waiting for it to dry. Right, they've been drying overnight. You don't necessarily need to leave it that long. It was just a convenient time to stop. Uh, so yeah, they're good and solid now, coated with Mod Podge and nice black undercoat. So now I'm gonna give them an overbrush of just gray craft paint. I'm using a neutral gray, kind of a middle, mid range, mid shade gray. Uh, yeah, so a little splodge on my palette. Cheap brush again, get rid of the excess because it's an overbrush, not quite a dry brush. And then very quickly go over this. The thing I love about, <coughs> dear me, the thing I love about painting terrain is you don't have to be really accurate. Again, uh, that's one of the reasons I like doing these walls. It really is a take your brain out, put it to one side. You don't have to think too hard and it doesn't take long. And it leaves some of the shade in the crevices. And you can see how quickly I'm getting through these. And 
Now if you really wanted to, you could mix the gray with some other tones, some earthier tones, and brush that over as well, just to add a bit of visual flavor to the stones, because stones aren't all gray. Some stones are uh, brownish colors, some are even got a blue tint to them or red tint to them. Um, but yeah, I'm not going over the top, I'm just going to do that. That's four sections of wall with their initial coat on. And next up, I'm gonna give them a dry brush with buff titanium, but any sort of beigey off-white will do. Um, I've wiped the excess off my brush because this is gonna be a dry brush, but I've not cleaned my brush. It just helps the colors blend a bit better if you don't completely clean your brush. And when you're doing dry brushing and over brushing, it doesn't really matter. So again, a little bit. And in theory, this should be even quicker than doing the gray. So I've just got a little dot of paint on my brush. Wipe off the excess and just very lightly try and catch the raised bits. And because the gray is still wet, it blends slightly. So a bit more paint, wipe it off. And what I tend to do is do this two or three times so you're gradually building up the highlights. I just realized you can't actually see what I'm doing. So a little bit of paint, wipe it off, and then just lightly flick the brush over the raised areas. A little bit of paint, wipe off the excess, flick the brush over the raised areas. Last one. Right, so that's all four done once. So now I'll go back to the beginning. Bit more paint. Wipe off the excess and go over them again. And you're adding just those few layers of highlights. One. Two. Three. could do it again but I don't think I'm going to I'm going to leave it there because the next stage is I'm going to apply a shade wash to them so this now needs to completely dry and even though it's called a dry brush the paint is still a little bit wet at the moment so I'm going to give it half an hour and then come back and give it a shading wash and at this stage I am going to wash the brush right the walls are now dry the dry brushing has dried uh, so what I'm now going to do is add a wash. Now you could use expensive Games Workshop hobby washers or uh, Army Painter ones, but I've made my own. It's um, a little bit of matte medium, some, yeah, it's about, I don't know, about one part matte medium, some drops of brown ink, a bit of black ink, and then deionized water with a little bit of flow aid in it. Uh, but you could just get some black, uh, brown paint mixed with a bit of black paint and thin it down or even mix it with glue but yeah just a bit of wash and again this will add a bit of tone to it fill in those crevices help the highlights merge and just slosh that on all over this is a really old brush as you can see quite a soft bristled one to get into all the crevices just slosh it all on bath it in it if you like And again, set that aside to dry. And depending on what you used, um, th this mixture tends to dry relatively quickly, actually, even though it's mostly water. Um, paints, watered down paints, tend to take a little bit longer for some reason. But uh, yeah, just slosh it all on. Let it get into the crevices. And as I say, leave it to dry. Right, now they're dry. I'm going to reapply the highlight. 
and you've already seen me do this so I'll just quickly fly through one of them just so you can see what the difference is not going to like that before the gearing and the after or even before and after so again just picks out those highlights again so I'm going to do that to all the others again and with that done I'm now going to do a little bit of an overbrush towards the bottom of the wall uh, with a green because over time walls get moss and lichen and things like that growing over them uh, so the bottom half of the wall tends to get a nice deep shade of green now I've only got a light green so I'm gonna put a blob of light green in my palette and I'm gonna mix into that just a tiny amount of burnt umber dark brown using a really crappy old brush uh, you don't need a lot it just needs to desaturate it maybe a little bit more than that That's probably gone too far the other way now. Yeah. Add more green. Just chat amongst yourselves. There we go, that's better. Almost like a, a deep olive drab, olive green, army toy soldier green. Like that. Like loads of the excess off my brush and again this is kind of like an overbrush and we're just going to do bottom half maybe a little way up so next time you're out for a walk and you come across a dry stone wall take a look at the wall and you'll see that it's got elements of green on it from the lichen and the moss, lichen, lichen. Does anybody know how to say, it, say that word? Yeah, just adds that green tint. Don't know how well the camera's picking it up. And again, just makes it look that little bit more natural. And I'm just flicking the brush over these stones that are lower down. Maybe a little bit towards the top, but mostly concentrating around the bottom. I've got a little too heavy there. Really nice and quick. Every single painting step is pretty quick on this, as you'll have noticed. The initial one of painting it black takes the longest, but even that didn't take too long. There we go. Mossed up. Next up, gonna flock around the bases and just need some glue and some sand. And I am actually using decent glue for this, Gorilla Glue, because A, it's really strong, and B, it dries quick. So you've got less chance of the sand falling off afterwards. You can use cheap PVA, just takes longer to dry. Um, that's about the only disadvantage to it. I tend to use this for uh, anything I want to get done quick or anything that I want to really withstand the test of time uh, so yeah in this case it's for speed so put some into a tub splodge it around the base I'm pretty sure you all know how to do this but basically filming myself as I'm hobbying it's almost like a vlog this video rather than a how-to because I've shown you how to do it right at the very beginning Splodge the glue on. Coat it around the edges. Make sure it's in all the crevices and cracks at towards the bottom. And dip it in the sand. Take off the excess. Now do the others. 
Right, now the glue has had plenty of time to dry with the sand on it and I'm now going to seal it with some brown base sealer. Now as you can tell by the label this is my own recipe and essentially it's one third brown paint, uh, you know just cheap acrylic craft paint, one third cheap and nasty PVA, the cheaper the better for this one. So we've got expensive stuff for gluing the base on, uh, the sand on, cheap stuff for sealing it on. Um, I buy a one litre bottle of like school grade PVA from I think it's B&M for £2.49. Um, so yeah, cheap PVA because it's nice and thin and then top it up with water, ideally deionized water. Uh, but any tap water will do, just beware with tap water, it might go off, whereas deionized water supposedly doesn't. And a drop of flow aid slash washing up liquid, but literally just one drop. That just helps it to move, give it a really good shake. And um, yeah, it saves me a lot of time because I used to put glue on to seal it in place and then you apply paint over the top of it. So I thought, why not mix the two together? So that's what I did. Give it a quick shake. There is actually a stone in here, one of these gravel stones, just to help mix it up. You see it's still got a decent amount of pigmentation to it, but it's nice and runny. And that's what you want, you want it to be relatively thin. And then we're just going to slot this on over the top of the sand. And because the sand is absorbent, it soaks it in, and because the glue that is on the bottom is PVA, it will reactivate when it gets wet. Um, so yeah, then it sort of encases the sand, fully encases it in PVA. And obviously the paint helps to give it an earthy colored texture. This is burnt umber paint, just burnt under craft paint. And because it's nice and thin, it saves time highlighting later. If you wanted to highlight it, um, again, I used to seal it with PVA, paint it dark brown, then highlight it with a sandy colour, um, the uh, the titanium, the buff titanium stuff that you saw earlier. And yeah, this just saves that step because you get the natural highlights through because the paint is thin. It's almost like a wash over the sand. And uh, yeah, so instant shading almost. And again, we just leave that to dry. So um, yeah, it, it, these ones are gonna be snowy. So um, yeah, I could have saved myself a little bit of time, but I like it to be as natural as possible. So this is the uh, layer of earth. There's gonna be a layer of grass, and then there's gonna be a layer of snow on top of the grass. But yeah, I don't need to show you how to paint stuff over sand. So I'll stop there. Right, so the sealant coat is dry and now back to more decent glue and I'm going to put on some grass flock. Now this is going to be like the sawdust type flock. Um, you could also, for these other pieces I've used, you know, proper grass flock. I say proper grass flock, but yeah, like the fibrous, fibery type. Or if you want to be really cheap, you can just get yourself some mixed herbs from the supermarket. And that's what this is, mixed herbs. Makes your work area smell like an Italian restaurant for a few days. Uh, but in this particular case, because I'm gonna put a layer of snow over the top of it, but I want to be able to see the green through the snow, I'm using the fine sawdust type flock. So again, squidge of me decent glue. And yeah, if I was gonna put snow flock, over this um, you know, sort of fibery glass, uh, grass, not glass, fibrous grassy type flock. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how well the snow would stick to that. So I've got some good old fashioned sawdust in there, um, the sawdust type flock. I've had this for years, literally years, probably at least 10 years, if not more. Anyway, same basic principle, but Make sure you get right in to the where the ground meets the wall um, because you tend to get a lot of grass in amongst the bottom of walls where it doesn't get munched upon quite so much by any livestock. Decent helping all the way around. And again, 
again, just so we don't completely obscure all the work we've done so far. Um, I'm not going right the way to the edge. I'm gonna leave a little bit of brown showing around the edges just because, yeah, just because I'm going to. I think it looks all right. Right, so some of that. Dunk it in the green stuff. Not that it's green stuff, but you know, it's green, it's stuff. It's not green stuff, but it's green and it's stuff. And we're gonna let that dry. And then we'll fog some more. What you could also do is if you had a darker color, this is really too light for what I'm about to talk about. You could, um, in fact, I've done it on this one, sort of put some bits of flock in amongst the cracks and crevices. Again, just because you know, grass seed and moss seed and other seed sort of gets blown onto the walls and can take root. So you could do that if you wanted to, but for these ones, I'm not going to. Right, three more. Right, finally, snow. So for this, I am using cheap white PVA, I'm not using the Gorilla Glue because the Gorilla Glue has got like a yellow tint to it. And as we all know, yellow and snow, no, no, no. So this will dry clearer than the uh, the Gorilla Glue. So I'm gonna splodge myself some decent amount because we're gonna use a fair amount of this. And I'm using Woodland Scenics Soft Flake Snow. Uh, this is about £10 a tub, but as you can see, I've got loads of it. And so far, that has done 4,500 points of Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolves, uh, as well as my Dead Zone Snowy Rock Terrain. Um, so it goes a long way. So it's worth the investment. People say that Wooden Scenics is a bit expensive, but it is. But you know, it lasts you a long time. Um, right, so I'm gonna get a wall and I've got a clean, dry ice cream tub because, oops, <laughs> good thing I didn't take the lid off. Um, yeah, we're gonna do it good old fashioned glitter style. So slop on some glue and I'm gonna go over the top of this as well because the snow's gonna settle on top of the wall basically any of the upward facing surfaces and around the base as well and this stuff around the base because this glue is quite cheap and it's thin it'll help seal in that grass even though we're now about to cover the grass as I say I like to have the natural layers so earth grass snow slop it on I'm trying to look at it from the top downwards so I can see where the snow would fall and catch and land. Maybe it drifts in a little bit around the base. I think that'll do. Right, pop it in the pot. And now let's have ourselves a little blizzard. Try and pick it up carefully so I'm not gonna knock the snow off. And there we have a snow covered wall. Now what I'm gonna do with this is let this have plenty of time for that PVA to dry. And then I'm probably gonna seal it with some really thinned down PVA glue so this stuff but watered down a lot and again that will seal it because it will reactivate the glue that's underneath it and bind it together um, and there yeah we'll have some nice snowy covered walls so I'll do some more right that's dried and I'll be honest that has not worked out the way I wanted it to so I'm going to revert to plan B which is technically plan A which is do it the way I did it on my Space Wolves bases because I was kind of hoping that I could just use it like flock and that hasn't worked. So what I did with the Space Wolves was I mixed some white paint with some thinned down PVA glue, basically the same stuff I used last time, only 50-50 mixed with water, and some of the snowflake together to make a paste and then slapped it on. So yeah. 
I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. So I'm gonna whip up some of that and then splodge it on the walls. So what we want first is, in fact, you can still see the residue. This cup here on my palette is residue from the last time I did it with my space walls. So what happens when you try to cut corners? It don't always work. So I want some of this. I'll tip it into one of these reservoirs. Fill most of the pot, probably just over halfway. And then we'll add some of the glue, which is very thin, as I say, it's 50-50 water and glue in here. Got a stick to stir it with. Get it into the actual pot. So mix it into a paste. You can see it's starting to thicken already. And that almost looks like melted snow now. And the reason I add the white paint is because otherwise it is slightly translucent. So effectively you get the effect they've got here. It's almost like a thick frost, which is not what I'm going for. I want nice, thick, fluffy snow, like freshly fallen snow. And that's about the consistency that I want. So it's actually sticking in a glob. Now to add some paint, there's not a lot of paint left in here. That's where I find out it's all dried up. Well, it's not, but there's not a lot left. Let's see if I can squeeze any out. Get the spatula out of the way. There we go. And this just helps to make the whole mixture a bit more opaque. Note to self, buy more white paint tomorrow. Mix that all the way through. There we go. It's about as good as that needs to be. And then, really old paintbrush that you're using as a glorified spatula, and just splodge it on, nice and thick. I should have done this in the first place but yeah getting distracted with filming something that I normally just crack on and do and try and be clever and try new things but you've got to try new things and if they don't work go back to the the way you used to do things splodge it on yeah and I'll just do that and I'll show you it when it's, when it's finished this can take a little bit of time because it tends to clump and fall around of its own accord. But yeah, I'll show you what it looks like once I'm done. Right, so there we go. So this is still very much wet, literally just finished pop splodging it on. Now, because this has got paint in it, it will shrink as it dries uh, because it's got PVA glue in it rather. Uh, so yeah, it will still have a nice deep snowy effect like we've got on this Dreadnought. So a nice thick layer of snow. Um, rather than this, this very much looks like hoarfrost, which is definitely not the effect I'm going for. Um, but I suppose if you did want hoarfrost, yeah, just put PVA glue on it and sprinkle your snow on and let it dry. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside to dry and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's fully dried. In the meantime, I've got to mix up a bit more because this one wall has used up uh, pretty much all of that batch that I put together. Uh, so yeah, I need four times as much to finish off the walls that I've done. Right, so there we are, those are all dried. And as you can see, it's formed kind of like a, a nice layer of nice fluffy, freshly fallen snow. And that shouldn't need sealing, that should be absolutely fine as it is. But if you wanted to, you could put a, uh, a coat of varnish over it. Or you could even dry brush some gloss varnish over it to make it sparkle a bit more. But in essence, I'm going to declare those done. So yeah, as I say, it doesn't really matter which version you're trying to make. That's the same basic principle. Uh, I think I forgot to say that these were obviously built on popsicle sticks, these longer ones, these six inch ones built on popsicle sticks. And the inner core is just a piece of single corrugated cardboard, um, but it's the same basic principle. So yeah, that's how I make stone walls for war games. So uh, yeah, could probably have 
completely foregone the grass flock around this but it was a little bit of an experiment uh, yeah based on what I already knew so yeah don't be afraid to try new things I hope you enjoyed that uh, please continue to like comment and subscribe and hopefully you'll see these in a video soon until next time stay safe and god bless